studio. Today we're going to be doing the Miriam Joy Wax Technique Jewelry Line and we're going to do a bunch of different uh, videos for you on different pieces because they all kind of have little techniques. But before we get started on the piece we're working on today, we want to go over some of the tools and how we get the gourd piece ready. So that's kind of important. This that I'm working on is a, a two inch gourd round. And we get these by using our circle drill. And these just simply hook into your drill. You just set them right in there like that. Now you can position this bit so that it's not in the way but it's harder to control. So if you're using the bit and you want to leave the drill in the middle that's fine and then what I do is I simply fill it in with quick wood and sand it out. Now the slower you take these, the smoother your pieces are going to be. So my suggestion is just take it nice and slow. If you have a drill press, it's easier. You just hook this into the drill press and take the drill press down nice and easy. You want thicker pieces. You don't want something that's really, really thin. It needs to be wide enough that we can put a strip of leather or whatever you want to put on the sides. There's all kinds of different ways to finish it and we'll talk about that when we get to that part. But I do them with thicker pieces and then I take them and I have a, um, let's see, what is this called? A sanding <laughs> tabletop sander. It's a belt sander and I just smooth my edges down and I done them by hand too. It's not a big deal. You can do the sizes by hand if you want to make sure that they're nice and perfectly round. And then I take the bottom of it and I just sand it like this. Now because they're thicker I get that nice smooth finish. You can sand the top if you have uh, little brimishes or anything like that. And if you have a little hole or two, don't forget you can fill that in with your quick wood as well. It doesn't take that much. But other than that, these do not have to be sanded. You do not want them sealed. You want them nice and natural. You don't want anything underneath. We're not going to be working with any dyes or anything other than just our Crayola crayon for our color. We will be adding some of that. Now to make this easier for you, we do have the different sizes available on the website. This is a two and a half inch round. And what I work most commonly with is the two inch. I have a one and a half, which is a nice little necklace size or also the one and a quarter, and this makes great earrings. I don't want my earrings so small that I can't work with them, so we'll be getting some earring kits for you as well. Um, all of these are available on our website as pieces and as kits. And we're going to, um, excuse me, lost my train of thought there. Um, we just want to make sure that we have these available so that you don't have to do the work. You can just buy them and you're ready to go. And a lot of our kits are going to have everything you need in it to do that Pacific one. So whatever kit you want, you just order it online and it will have most of your products available in it. So we've talked about how our little pieces are. Oh, I know where my train of thought went. I would not recommend doing a bigger piece than the two and a half. You can try it, but most of them, like I said, I like the two inch. The reason is there's only so much room you can control the wax while it's warm. So that's the reason I don't get into the, the bigger pieces of gourds and you want to kind of watch them. You don't want them too lumpy or bumpy because remember your wax is going to melt into the lower spots. So we want to try and have it as flat as possible. We know that gourds aren't flat but we try and do our best. Okay, um, 
we're going to be using, of course, uh, the Miriam Joy melting pot that has the well in it so we can put our crayons in here. This technique does take a little bit more crayon than what you're used to working with. And I'm not going to lie to you about this, but the more pots you have, the better the experience is going to be for you, one for each color. Otherwise, you're trying to jump around too much, trying to clean out the melting pot, getting to the next color. So if you have three melting pots, you might kind of think about doing a project that has just three colors. You can clean it out. It's just going to take you longer, that's all. And you just, the more you have, the more you're going to really love that. And this is addicting. I'm going to warn you up front, it is very addicting. Once you start this, your ideas are just going to go crazy and you're going to start thinking of all these things that you can do. I do use the Miriam Joy tools. When I'm applying the wax on with larger amounts, I use my number two tool, um, which is the biggest of the tools. And then I go into the smaller tools to move things around. So know that they are going to be <coughs> move around on you a little bit um, so you want the smaller tips of the Mary and Joy tools. We use the uh, stipple brushes and I don't even try to clean these out because they're so reasonably cost and I try to keep these all reasonable for you. I have one for each color and this is when we're putting large amounts of color in them and I'll be showing you different um, pieces where we're using this tool to make our process go a whole lot faster and it's time to lay the wax kind of more evenly on there. I've also introduced the eyedroppers. Now we carry these as well. Again, I do the same thing. I try to have one for each color and at a reasonable cost so that you don't have to worry about trying to clean them out or anything. And they have to be glass. You do not want to try and put plastic into your melting pot or your hot wax. You're going to melt it. So we want to make sure that we're using glass eyedroppers. And this, again, is just a, uh, it's a easier way to get the wax spread out along a longer cross of area. So that's the reason that we have start introduced the eyedroppers. I am also going to use the texture brush and inserts in some of the different things I make and the ones I do that you're really going to like. They're going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you have your texture brush and insert ready for some of these as well. I'm sticking with a lot of these, a 24 box of crayons. This, the, doing these videos or the wax technique is great because you can take out your crayons that you don't use a lot of and just throw them all together and make some wonderful fun stuff. But I'm going to stick with a 24 because that's the most economical as we know. Don't forget your darker colors. Use your white to lighten them exp up, especially your blues and your purples so they don't look black and then you get these real fun colors. Because in, in this the 24 box, we don't really have a lighter purple. And look at the tip, because like this purple here is almost black. I'm also going to be using a lot of the metallic colors, which are a lot of fun. Um, they're really, really just great. They have that sparkle to them, almost like there's glitter in them. And here's a, a silver that's warmed up just to kind of show you the kind of stuff that you're going to get and how fun they are. I'm not using as much of the glitter um, because when you heat them up, they kind of get a little bit, I don't know how to explain it, harder. But try them and see if you like it. If not, go back to your metallic colors. I don't recommend doing a whole bunch of metallic colors in one piece because your crayons give it the brightness that you want and when you're using metallics you kind of lose that brightness and that color so I do one or two metallic colors with a piece at the most and stick with my basic crayons we have all kinds of fun things we can add into our wax as we're working um, there's all kinds of glitters and items I have been using the micro beads and then one of my favorites is the tinsel glitter. And you have 
thicker glitter and finer glitter and there's just all kinds of really neat kinds that is out there there's also this is like a leafing I think they call this like a vintage leafing but there's just all kinds of things think about adding to them all kinds of scrapbook um, items that you can use in this and we'll show you how to melt it into your wax once we get going one of my favorite things are these little guys though because when I'm doing this I find I can control it better if I can get my finger in there and I just want to put it on just a little bit and spread it across just with my fingers and I like these little containers better and we are gonna sell these on our website with the little glitters in them so you can get exactly what you want and just sprinkle it and get in and out of it with your finger and that again is the tinsel glitter so they have all kinds of neat things and in this one I have some of the tinsel glitter in I and I have some of the micro beads in but just anywhere where you think that you may need something we can add a little bit of sparkle this one has just the real fine silver in it and then I want to show you on this one we have a little bit of the bigger pieces in it just just a tad just enough to set that piece off but I really think that the glitter really makes or breaks your piece I think it's a lot of fun and let's get started because this is going to be so much fun I got so excited about getting ready to play I forgot to couple of the key um, things that we're using here so I'm going to go back and just cover a couple other little things you might have seen these sitting on the table these are my rubber gloves and they're also they call them garden gloves but you want the ones with the rubber on them this is kind of a tip I'm going to give you these make holding onto your gourd so much easier so if you have a gourd or you're working with a gourd, especially when I'm working with my drill press and I need to hold on to one, I can hold on to it nice and e or easy and it doesn't slip around as much. I also use it when I'm working with my pieces to hold on to that are smaller because they're just that much more secure or especially when I am sanding on my sander I can hold on to it with a better grip so any of the gloves with the rubber work really really well no matter what type of gourd work you're doing those are fun to use I also have my table covered in a piece of paper um, you can get the bigger pieces of paper at your newspaper the leftover rolls or at a butcher a lot of times we'll have the bigger strips of paper because we're moving so fast and working so fast we'll get a lot of wax spread out so we don't want to do um, have splatters all over our work area I also have a, a black tray especially right under where I have my heat gun and we'll talk about that in a minute because you're gonna have splatters coming off and going different areas you want to kind of contain that better bigger splatter area there I also have a hook kind of a shepherd's hook uh, or a plant hanger and this one happens to hook right onto my table I found this one at a craft store but also your garden supplies and if you happen to be one of the ones that has a rotary tools that has the hanger to hang off of that would work really really nicely as well and I know that there are some vendors out there that do sell those um, you might try to check like Bonnie Gibson side or some of the others as well I'm going to be using one of the most important tools today is our heat tool. They're also called embossing tools or heat guns. So if you have any of those three written on it, it's all um, good. We do now carry this style, and I really like this style because it comes in here at the middle and it's easy to hold. And when I first started doing this process, I would work with this hand and hold with this hand and it's a little bit harder so that's why I recommend the the stand but you can do it if you need to um, do that so that is a little bit more of our tools that we're going to be using today oh, turn that right on we know that it works and now let's get playing and have some fun 
Okay, we're going to be working on our giraffe print and show you how to do that. Uh, the color that I'm going to be using in the background is a tan, and the tan is a little bit harder to find. It is not in the 24 pack. So if you have a hard time, the best thing you can do is order one of our kits on the website and it'll have everything you need in that, including your tan color. I did try to make that color with brown and adding some white, and I just don't get the color um, that I want. So we're, first thing I'm going to do on this one is we're going to heat this guy up and get him nice and warm, and then we're going to smooth the wax on over the top of him. And make sure we start on the outside because it takes longer for it to heat, and then we're going to get to the inside. And if you've noticed, I don't really hold these a lot because they get really warm. You don't want to burn yourself. So once I have that warm, I'm going to use my stipple brush, and I've warmed it up in my wax, and we're just going to start applying color. And you can see how smooth that goes on and how even that goes on. So we've created this nice base coat. I've got a booger in it there. Don't know where that came from. Let's get this little guy over here. And if you get where it's not even, just warm it up again. It's not a big deal. But you do have to wait for this to cool a little bit longer because we've warmed everything up. So it takes a little bit while to cool. So I'm going to have one that I've already used. And we're going to go to our white. And I'm going to use my wax liner tool and I've been warming it up and it's been sitting in the white so I'm gonna <coughs> take that and scoop up the white And if you've never used one there's a video on how to use a wax liner and I'm gonna use some of it first out on my towel because you get some big clunks and I want to kind of get some smaller ones and cool it off a little bit now what we're going to do is we're not pushing hard on this at all. We're kind of going off the top of the wax. Don't really push on it because the wax is soft and you want to make sure that you are only getting a little bit of it. So try and do that as light as you can on top of it. Now I do want to show you what would happen if you went directly to your piece you're going to get a gob and that's not as bad as sometimes what you get but I'll even show you how to kind of make that even smaller but I would like it to even be less so we will always kind of work it off first you don't want to go straight to your piece. And the wax can kind of build up on your tool, so make sure you're not pushing very hard on that. So we've got that. Now if you have a piece that is a little bit wider, just bring your hobby knife in and trim it. It's not a big deal. Now try not to take that underneath layer off. We're just going to trim and I'm going to take that one down a little bit because we don't want him too high above these because it will take him longer to melt. We want to keep it all about the same consistency. Okay, so I'm going to go melt him. And I just want to get him where he's just starting to move just a little bit. Make sure your lines are all melted evenly. And we're going to stop. Now you can leave it right there. Or you can um, use a little bit of splatter on here. I, I think I did a little bit too much on that one. And we'll do just a tad on this one. What we want to do is just have very little wax in our brush. In fact, I don't even go into the well. I kind of go onto that second layer and get some of it off and then kind of test it 
make sure you're getting kind of a fine mist before you do that. And all we're going to do is just kind of give it, break up the solid is all we're doing. And we're not going to reheat that. When you reheat your dots, they actually get bigger. The wax gets bigger. We don't want them. We want them just like that. So that is our little giraffe guy. And while he's doing that, I'm going to remove his sides, his wax, while he's cooling off. Excuse me. I remove all the wax off the sides. And we want to make sure he's nice and cool before we apply our uh, finish on top of him. And don't touch those little dots while they're wet. Can't, don't know why I can't keep my hand out of the wet one. I'm always trying to push it, which I should know better. And I really like the look. This one came out really neat. I really do like the look. Okay, we're going to be using the Maj Paj Dimensional Magic. And this is what I use on my jewelry to harden them up. And the Dimensional Magic is made to go on thick. It should be and we can't apply it without it falling over the sides but we've got to apply it thick enough so what we're going to do don't shake it is start on the outside and we're going to put it all the way around the outside and I kind of let that dry in between the last one so I've got to find Grab a little scissors here or a pin. Let's see if I've got it. If it plugs up, just get your safety pin, straight pin, unplug it. It's the first time I've had it. I'm Plug, but I've been messing with it a lot today and had it out. So we're going to put it all the way around the edge and we're going to put it in the middle. Now it's better to have too much than not enough. Take it around the edges. Get all those edges nice and coated. Okay. And then we're going to move it around in the middle. And if you're going to notice, I'm not straight up and down, and I'm barely kind of dragging that. It's better to overdo it than under. Now, if you watch my brush strokes, you're going to see those disappear because it's settling. You know you have enough on. If you don't have enough on, you're going to see your brush strokes. You want to make sure you do it, but don't overwork it. I just barely put it on. I'm done. I'm not touching it again. You want to let this dry. You want to do at least three to five coats because this is wax and we want to make sure that it is nicely coated and I always tell you to test it in the sun if it's going to be worn out in the sun so that's a reason we're putting so many coats on our wax piece but also to test it. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back we're going to finish our necklace. Okay now that we've finished decorating our jewelry piece and we have removed the wax off the sides with our hobby knife and we put five coats of the Maj Paj on, the Dimensional Magic, and it is dry. We're going to come in with our black acrylic paint and just paint the sides and the back all nice and neat. And if you get any of the paint up here, just wipe it off because you've already got your sealer on, so that'll just wipe off. Now make sure if you've used your Dimensional Magic, it's been three hours and that it's nice and dry. We don't want that um, wet and your fingerprints in there. And we're going to talk some more about different things that you can use other than what I am using. Um, in this, I'm going to use the basic black suede strip and the reason I use black in the backgrounds is it's a fade 
color. So the design and the piece stands out and the sides don't distract from your design or the front part. So that is a reason that I use the black. Now there's lots of other colors that you could use and decide that you would rather do instead of the black like on the red flower. Paint the sides red and then put your leather red leather piece over that to bring out the red and the flower. That's fine. You have all kinds of things. This is some little silk pieces that I have found. You could put those around there. I've used some. I've turned them into a braid. You could put a braided piece around there to bring that out. It's all kinds of different stuff. I found some little tiny Hawaiian beads that I thought if you had the right piece those would look fun. But you've got all kinds of thread and yarn and just different accents that you can use. Don't get stuck on just what I'm showing you today. I always tell you to think outside the box. Well, think outside the gourd piece here. I have some silver wire that you could use as well as some stained glass siding that's sticky that you could put on the sides. So there's all kinds of things that you could do with it. One of my favorites for this piece was a braided a uh, suede piece around that and how neat that makes that look. But like I said, we're going to stick with the black basic for now because it helps the pattern stand out in the background. And if you've done the beading video, there is one thing that we're going to do different and we're going to move the uh, suede piece towards the front so it's flush with the front of our piece. So we have painted in black. It's nice and dry. I'm going to put a tad of tacky glue on to start it. And on this one I'm going to decide where my top of my gourd piece is going to be. And I'm going to stop and finish, start and finish there. And that is so I can also get my eye screw in between those two pieces. Now I'm going to set it down flush. I'm going to use an awl and I'm going to stick that awl right in the middle of that piece on the end. And with the awl you want it to go about a fourth of an inch down because the sequin pins that we're going to be using are half inch. Throw a couple of those out there. And if you do it right, you should only need two of these. And some gourd pieces are tougher than others. And some are soft, softer. And this guy is going to be a booger. He is nice and hard. Let's see. And I leave my finger right there. So hopefully I can kind of have an idea where that hole is and I can sink my nail into that hole without it being too hard. And I'm going to try moving him just a tad here because he is not playing with me today. There we go. And I have tried all different ways to do this with the hammer and all kinds of things. And you, the awl is the easiest way. You only want to put it halfway down so your sequin can push in halfway so it holds nice and secure. You don't want to um, push it all the way otherwise your sequin won't have anything to push into. Now instead of hammering or doing anything I found it was just easier to push the pin straight in and if it bends take your pliers and pull it out. You don't want to go any further and you want to make sure that this pin is not going towards the front. You don't want it to go through your design. You'd rather go down or towards the back. If it comes through anywhere you'd rather it came through the back. We're going to try it one more time. Nice and slow just pushing that straight in. This is a hard gourd. And it's kind of nice so you know that it happens to me as well. So we're going to leave this one in here. Try one more time with my awl. And we're going to 
push that straight down. Don't let it go to the side. The thimble is important. It's a non-slip thimble so that you cannot slip around and that really helps out. Okay, so we finally got that guy in there. And I like to leave that in there because if I have problems, you're going to have problems once in a while. And we don't want to have this too messy. We don't want it on top of our leather because we're not covering up our leather. Our leather is our final piece. We'll bring that all the way around. And when I lay my tacky glue down, I always have it on the side instead of straight up and down so I don't have to shake it and get that air bubble out before I grab it. So we're just going to put this on and we wanted it flush with the front so I'm just kind of moving that around and we're going to bump up right up next to this we're going to put you're not going over the top of it but you're going right next to where we did the first one Let's see if this guy will go in a little bit easier. Push him in nice and slow, straight up and down. This one's been a booger. And if he bends, we know we're going to pull. I'm going to grab my pliers here. this guy out and that's why we put extra pins in your kit and usually I do not have this hard of a time this is just a tougher piece just like you have soft gourds and hard gourds it's the same thing with this I'm going to try to put the hole in again a little bit further down Like I said, it's a good thing to do these on these videos because then you know when you do it, you're not thinking how easy it was. And usually it goes in much easier. I usually do not have this hard of a time at all. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim this off. You still want the two pieces kind of meeting right there. Okay. And remove any of this glue from the front. You do not want any of this showing kind of make sure it's on the edge and what this does is just frames your piece that much nicer now where these two pieces touched I'm actually going to come in between those two and I'll punch another hole and actually I'm not going to I'm going to punch this one because it's thicker right behind it. But if it's not thicker, it's thinner, just put it right down the middle of your piece right there. Because when you go to, to turn it, your, your pieces are broken right there, so you're not turning them as much. So we're going to put our awl in there again. And we're going to twist on our screw eye. This is the smallest ones you can find. I think this is like a 7 16th. It'll be in your kits. So now we have that on. And I drop my necklace. And we're going to put our jump ring on. And I'm going to open the jump ring up. I'm going to put it through the necklace, decide which way your clasp goes on your necklace so that you have that the right direction and then put your pendant part on and then you're going to squeeze it shut and you want no space between that now it's a bigger you don't have to worry about exactly but you never want when you're working with jump rings you never want them coming off so you want to make sure they're nice and tight So we want those meeting and you can also squish them on there too 
so that you know that they're nice and tight and right where they meet. And we have our necklace. Now, if you notice, the screw eye is facing this direction so that your jump ring is facing this direction. Now, if you have any glue or stuff on the back like this, go back over and paint that up, and touch that up with your black acrylic paint. And you can also add part of a back on there. You can cut out the size of your circle and put a piece of material or leather on there just so that it's a little bit smoother on your, neck, on your um, necklace, if your, your skin, if you happen to be wearing it above your clothing. And if you like the piece with the beading on, we also have the beading technique, and that is on the Miriam Joy website, and that just really makes all of your stuff stand out. And there is a great video on how to do that step by step. And so we're just adding all kinds of dimension to your jewelry, and it's amazing just what Crayola crayon can do and how fantastic it looks. Nobody's going to believe that these are actually crayons. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please know that you can use the play the video in YouTube again and again. You don't you're not limited to one time, and that there also are kits for each one of these. Hopefully, if you don't see anything up online, email me at art at miriamjoy.com or if you have any questions. And for any of the other projects, just visit my website at miriamjoy.com. Thank you, God bless, and have fun.